A great deal of research was done into this topic by the dentist Dr. Weston Price about a hundred years ago. Dr. Price was a highly respected American dentist and researcher who conducted a lot of research into both root canals and the impact of the Western diet on jaw development and dental disease. He founded what was later to become the research section of the American Dental Association and served as its chair for 14 years from 1914. He conducted thousands of experiments over a period of 25 years on over 5,000 animals and published 220 scientific papers and four mighty books, some of which were used as dental reference texts. One set of experiments involved taking a small section of a root-filled tooth that had been extracted from a patient with a known disease and implanting it under the skin of a rabbit. Invariably the rabbits contracted the same disease as the original owner of the tooth. Not only that, he then implanted the same fragment in another rabbit and another up to a total of 33 times and all the rabbits contracted the same disease. So that if the patient had heart disease, the rabbit developed heart disease and if they had kidney trouble, the rabbit contracted kidney disease. He also repeated these experiments with healthy teeth and no adverse health effects resulted. We also know that microorganisms can be very specific to particular tissues, as in the case of the herpes simplex virus, which takes up residence in the nerve root which supplies the lips and mouth and occasionally reactivates, producing cold sores. And so it may be with these bacteria, which gravitate towards particular organs. Most of the bacteria Dr. Price identified were streptococci, but he also found staphylococci, spirochetes and fungi. He found that 90% of the patient's acute diseases were caused by mutated streptococci and that two-thirds of the time they belonged to the Ficalis family, which certainly could account for why so many necrotic or root-filled teeth smell so bad when opened up or extracted, and for why they tend to go brown over the decades. He also found that if an individual had more than one root canal treated tooth, that they could have different microorganisms infecting each one of the treated teeth, and that these could be causing a variety of ailments at the same time. Dr. Price also cultured the microorganisms he isolated from the root canal filled teeth and injected this broth, and also centrifuged the mixture to separate out the bacteria and injected just the fluid produced. What he found was that while the mixture of bacteria and their toxins induced weight loss, disease and death in the experimental animals, when the toxins were injected without the bacteria, that these produced even more profoundly fatal results. From this he concluded that it was the toxins rather than the bacteria that were producing the disease. He clearly photographed a variety of microorganisms dwelling within the dentinal tubules and showed that the bacteria that were growing inside the tooth could also be found in the periodontal membrane and bone surrounding the tooth. Dr. Price tested over a hundred different disinfecting agents and found that none of them penetrated the dentinal tubules. Even when he heat sterilized teeth under laboratory conditions, they still became infected within 24 to 48 hours. He also found that if pus or infection was present, that this was an indication that the immune system was successfully controlling the infected tooth and that such patients were healthy. However, the presence of condensing osteitis or a dense layer of bone surrounding the tooth was often an indication that the immune system was losing or had lost the battle and was attempting to wall off the offending tooth, and these individuals suffered more serious consequences from their infections. He also noted that about a third of patients who had strong immune systems appeared to tolerate root canal filled teeth fairly well, and that typically these people had no family history of degenerative disease. However, even these robust people could succumb to serious illness if exposed to other health challenges such as an accident, infection, pregnancy or other stress. Finally, he documented many improvements in the health of both humans and animals after extraction of root-filled teeth. Perhaps unsurprisingly, the implications of Dr. Price's research were not popular within the dental profession and his painstaking research was disregarded and some maintain that it was actively covered up by a small number of dentists and physicians and the professional bodies they belong to. His research has subsequently been confirmed by the dentist Dr. Harold Hawkins and Dr. Melvin Page and the physician and dentist Dr. Emmanuel Cheraskin, but it was only to resurface some 70 years later after inquiry by the retired endodontist Dr. George Meinig. 
The late Dr. George Meinig was an endodontist for 50 years and was a founder member of the American Association of Endodontics in 1943. After he retired, he discovered Weston Price's research and, full of remorse, wrote the book Root Canal Cover-Up, which was published in 1993. In it, he estimates that 75% of patients suffer chronic and degenerative illnesses due to their root canal filled teeth. Since then, others such as the dentist Dr. Robert Kulach and the cardiologist Dr. Thomas Levy have taken up the cause with their book The Roots of Disease and the dentist Dr. Hal Huggins with Root Canal, Saviour or Suicide. Physicians such as the late German oncologist Dr. Joseph Issels stated that in over 40 years of treating terminal cancer patients that 97% had root-filled teeth. Furthermore, he found that he could not achieve a successful outcome until all the root-treated teeth had been extracted. This has been confirmed more recently by Dr. Thomas Rao, who runs the Paracelsus Clinic in Switzerland. He checked the records of the last 150 breast cancer patients that had been treated at the clinic and found that 98% of them had one or more root filled teeth and also that the root fillings were on the same meridian as the original breast cancer tumour. In the case of the breast, the governing meridian passes through the second premolar or bicuspid tooth and this connection has also been observed by others including the holistic physician Dr John Diamond. Which brings us to another issue that is not yet widely accepted by allopathic medicine and dentistry and yet it is very real, and that is the existence of energy meridians within the body that animate and regulate different organ systems. Many of these pass through the teeth, and the retention of a dead body part, let alone one which is spewing bacteria and toxins, can have health consequences for the organs associated with the meridian. This is a two-way relationship, so that disease in the organ system governed by the meridian may also have created the dental disease in the tooth in the first place. However, some forward-thinking physicians and biological dentists do acknowledge the importance of meridians, and they have even been photographed using various techniques. Also, a root-filled tooth will always test as being an issue as assessed by electroacupuncture. And there are many instances where extraction of a root-filled tooth alone has been documented to enable resolution of some tumours. Dr. Price's findings have been confirmed more recently using modern techniques. Dr. Boyd Haley, the now retired professor of chemistry at the University of Kentucky, has confirmed that 75% of the root filled teeth he tested contained high levels of toxins. And Dr. Hal Huggins and his team at the Toxic Element Research Foundation have used DNA analysis to identify dozens of different anaerobic bacterial species taken from root canal samples. Each tooth tested to at least 10, and some to over 40 species of bacteria. Dr Huggins has also documented measurable changes in blood chemistry associated with root treatments, including a 58% increase in lymphocytes in humans and animals, a 33% decrease in polymorphonuclear leukocytes, a form of white blood cell, elevations in blood sugar levels, and some patients and all experimental animals lost weight. Conversely, improvements in blood chemistry have also been associated with extraction of root filled teeth, especially in people with autoimmune diseases. It seems that the combination of retention of a dead body part, compounded by the presence of the bacteria the root filled tooth harbours and their toxins, enhanced by the presence of toxic metals used in dentistry, may be the origin of many mysterious and autoimmune diseases. Also, the old concept of a particular microbe causing a specific disease may not apply and these syndromes may be caused by an overwhelm of the body's defences by multiple microorganisms and their toxins. There are certainly thousands of documented cases of improvements in health after extraction of root filled teeth, and possibly many more cases which have gone undocumented. Some holistic dentists are of the opinion that some root canal treated teeth can be tolerated if the immune system of the individual is robust, but others feel that all root filled teeth should be extracted. X-rays are known to be a poor way of assessing the toxicity of a root-filled tooth, and various methods involving taking saliva samples have recently been developed, although their effectiveness is not known. Before making any decision, make sure that you are fully informed and that you see a biological dentist conversant with the danger of developing cavitations after extraction. See the Dental Cavitations movie for more on this topic. Needless to say, the official position of the American Association of Endodontists 
is that root canal treatments are safe and effective. The whole concept of holistic care demands that the individual takes responsibility for their own health. However, because most dentists don't accept the problem posed by root canal treatments, they are not informing their patients of the potential risks, and so they remain in the dark when subsequently confronted by a serious or chronic ailment as to the potential cause. Also consider the possibility that any replacement of a root-filled tooth is likely to involve the use of a variety of metals which may create their own health problems, as documented in my book, Chronic Fatigue, ME and Fibromyalgia, The Natural Recovery Plan, and on the website www.thenaturalrecoveryplan.com. Thank you.